What's up guys, my name is Jake and welcome to Abandoned, episode 41. This is the show where we talk about some of the most interesting abandoned places in the world. This episode of Abandoned is sponsored by Skillshare. The first 300 people who sign up with my link below will get their first two months for free. If you've ever passed through Philadelphia like I did a few months ago, you may have had the odd sight of a classic ocean liner, decaying and abandoned in the harbor of the huge modern American city. Today I wanted to look at the history of this very ship, and why it's currently there in that state. Let's take a look at the SS United States. In the early 1940s, as World War II was raging on, the United States Army took notice of Britain's enormous and importantly fast ocean liners, most notably being the Queen Mary and the Queen Elizabeth, both able to carry well over 10,000 troops and reach speeds of around 28 knots. After the SS Normandy's fire and subsequent sinking in New York, the US Army commissioned a brand new ocean liner capable of high speeds and strong against any disaster, including fire. It was a joint venture between the armed forces and the United States Lines, a cargo and passenger transport company founded in 1921. The final design of their new vessel was drawn up from famous naval architect William Francis Gibbs, and would cost around $79 million, which is equivalent to around $820 million today. The name given to this very special ship was the SS United States. By the time construction began, however, the war had already been over for several years, and the primary purpose of this vessel would be for ocean-crossing voyages. Through 1950 to 1952, the vessel was built to withstand tremendously tough situations. Wood was barely used on the vessel, only allowed in the kitchen for chopping boards, and in the lounge for pianos, which would be made of special fireproof wood. The hull would be made of various watertight compartments, which not only would provide strength, but buy the ship lots of time in the event of a flooding. To complement its sleek exterior design, the United States was given a luxurious interior, fitted to the highest standards of the 1950s. The vessel was a culmination of the best technology they had, and many of her features were even classified, as the SS United States was able to be quickly turned into a troop ship in the event she would be needed for another war. By July 3, 1952, the vessel took her maiden voyage from New York City to Cornwall, England. She set an astonishing world record of being the fastest ocean liner of her size to cross the Atlantic, a record previously set by the Queen Mary. It's a world record that actually still stands today at an average speed of 36 knots, and completing the journey in just 3 days and 10 hours, a feat that probably won't be broken for a very long time. The SS United States spent the next decade and a half completing transatlantic voyages in its now famous speed, but also an unparalleled luxury for an American vessel. Hundreds of notable celebrities and politicians sailed on the ship. People like Marlon Brando, John Wayne, Marilyn Monroe, and American presidents like Eisenhower, Truman, Kennedy, and even a young Bill Clinton. However, by the late 1960s, air travel was becoming more and more popular, and the demand for transatlantic ocean liner crossings were decreasing. The SS United States kind of sister ship, the SS America, had already been sold by the line and taken off ocean crossings altogether. That vessel, by the way, met a very iconic fate in the 1990s, when it was being towed to Thailand and broke off during a storm. The ship ran aground on a beach in the Canary Islands, and was subsequently battered by waves until there was nothing left. Anyways, by 1969, both the Queen Mary and the Queen Elizabeth had been taken off transatlantic crossings, and the SS United States was no longer profitable the way it was currently placed. The vessel was brought to Virginia for refurbishment. However, after assessment, United States Lines had decided to sell the iconic ocean liner. For the next couple of years, she sat vacant and abandoned in port, waiting for someone to make a bid. Eventually, by the early 1970s, the ship was purchased for $12 million and passed through several owners. In 1977, the vessel found itself in Atlantic City, with the prospect of turning the 990-foot ocean liner into a hotel and casino. While the developer promised to keep the original classic decor and themes, this concept just never came to fruition. Plans then shifted to floating condos. Around this time, cruising was becoming very popular, and companies were buying older ships and turning them into modern cruise ships. It was really only a matter of time that the SS United States would be in the running for this very concept. And in 1978, Richard Hadley purchased the vessel with the intent to turn it into some sort of floating timeshare cruise. And while, to be fair, his vision for the ocean liner came from a genuine place, the overall cost to complete what he wanted would have exceeded $200 million. 
While he tried to keep his dream afloat, there just wasn't the proper funding to do so. Around this time, Norwegian cruise lines were reportedly looking into purchasing the vessel and adding it to their fleet for Caribbean sailings. However, the company ended up purchasing the similarly designed SS France and refitting the vessel into a modern cruise ship. United States sat vacant and unused through the 80s and into the early 90s. Her remaining interior fittings were sold at auction, and as the final timeshare concept collapsed, the SS United States was once again put up for sale. Marimura Marine Inc. had purchased the ocean liner for $2.6 million, with the intent to renovate the decaying ship and turn her into a passenger cruise. So the SS United States was towed to Turkey, then to the Ukraine, where she underwent an extensive gutting project to remove all former asbestos within the walls of her interior. This had all wrapped up in 1994, however at the renovation cost of $150 million, of course, once again, funding couldn't be secured. By this time, scrapping was a serious threat for the vessel, as its value as a practical ship was continuing to sink. So it was brought back to America and docked in Philadelphia. Because she was no longer able to operate under her own power, the SS United States needed to be towed wherever she went, which is a very expensive and slightly risky thing to do. This meant, for right now at least, Philadelphia would become her new home. In 1996, the ship was miraculously purchased for $6 million by a private individual and an advocate to save the historic ocean liner. He had successfully listed the ship on the National Register of Historic Places, and had set up several conservancy foundations. The United States was passed to his son once he died in 2002, and just a year later, surprisingly actually, Norwegian Cruise Lines had stepped in and purchased the entire ship with the similar intent they had nearly 25 years earlier. Norwegian Cruise Lines had been setting up a new subsidiary in their company called NCL America, a fleet of American-built and flagged vessels which would sail exclusively to domestic ports. NCL had already ordered their horrendously ugly Pride of America ship, and now the revamped SS United States would join their fleet. Over the next few years, Norwegian Cruise Lines kept the United States docked in Philadelphia, commencing feasibility studies to narrow down a price on the renovations and logistics. Their assessment actually showed pretty good results, and in 2006, NCL's chairman was quoted saying the company was still committed to bringing the SS United States into their America fleet, and claiming they had more ships already on the way. However, the economic climate was beginning to turn, and tourism crashed as a whole in 2008. Spending a couple hundred million dollars renovating an ocean liner built in the 1950s to serve a market it wasn't made for kind of makes no sense, especially for the company's somewhat failed NCL America division. So in 2009, rumors began circulating that Norwegian Cruise Line was going to sell the vessel for scrap to make some quick money. When news of this came out, the SS United States Conservancy attempted to raise the necessary funds to buy the ship off the company. A fundraiser was set up and greatly funded monetarily by Philadelphia entrepreneur H.F. Lenfest and supported by former President Bill Clinton. While NCL was reluctant to sell to them, they eventually accepted their offer at $3 million in 2011. Now the vessel was in full ownership of the SS United States Conservancy, a group that has always been fighting to find some purpose for what they claim is America's flagship vessel. Which it kind of is. Immediately after the Conservancy's purchase, the prospect of where the SS United States could go opened up. Places like Romanian Philadelphia or sailing to New York City and Miami became possibilities. And in 2010, a promising new multi-purpose entertainment complex was proposed to incorporate the ocean liner in South Philadelphia. This was all part of a massive waterfront development based around a new casino, one that was never able to secure a gambling license and subsequently fell apart. Over the next couple of years, the Conservancy began aggressively seeking out a developer to take the vessel out of Philadelphia, a city they had deemed unsuitable for the ship to permanently remain in. Some work had been done on the hull to keep up its deteriorating appearance. However, the money and donations they did take in likely went straight to paying rent and upkeep, which at the time was a reported $80,000 a month. A concept came up to move the SS United States to New York City, where it would have become an entertainment hub in the harbor. And while this concept was pushed in 2014, nothing ever came of it. This led to the Conservancy finally exploring the idea of selling the ship for scrap, as the now $60,000 monthly rent became overwhelming. Talks of turning the vessel into a museum came up and were pursued. However, while money came in, the ever-increasing decay of the vessel caused the upkeep and restoration expenses to skyrocket. The New York Times interviewed Susan Gibbs, the executive director at the United States Conservancy. She said the decision to open up the vessel for bids from scrapyards was, quote, excruciating, and said, We've never been closer to saving the SS United States. 
and we've never been closer to losing her. Incredibly, in February of 2016, Crystal Cruises, a somewhat American luxury cruise line, showed great interest in purchasing the SS United States and completely remodeling the vessel into, once again, a cruise ship. Crystal Cruises began looking into the feasibility of their plan, so they offered to pay docking expenses for nine months, while they sorted out the logistics and drew up their plan. And Crystal's concept for the ocean liner would entail pretty severe alterations of her upper decks. That kind of look awful, but I suppose it's the only way to make a vessel like this work in the modern cruise industry. So I guess this was the answer to all their problems, and now under the prestigious Crystal Cruises company, the SS United States would be brought back out to sea. Ah, oh, for God's sakes. Yeah, so after the cruise line's evaluation of the vessel, they deemed the project to have too many commercial and technical challenges, and the company dropped out with a donation of $350,000 to the Conservancy. And that leads us to today, the abandoned SS United States resting in the harbor of America's fifth largest city. This ocean liner has seen quite a history. It began as a sleek vessel, capable of not only strength and speed, but the ability to quickly transition into a troop carrier in the event of World War III. And incredibly, it only served 18 years as a transatlantic ocean liner. The rest of its life saw various owners and tons of concepts never to be fulfilled. America's flagship vessel never really got its deserved use. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely think the SS United States should be saved. I think it's a gorgeous vessel that carries a lot of history with it. However, the real logistics behind it are probably going to prevent it from ever becoming something again. I hope I am wrong, but at this point, two major cruise lines both opted out. Various big and small attempts have been made to turn this decaying vessel into something new and exciting, while returning it back to her former glory. Just, none of these ever worked. Ideas such as turning the vessel into an underwater reef have been thrown around, and while that's not the fate most would like, it's certainly a better one than being scrapped. The SS United States became an icon of the country it was built in. It grew to become a legendary and prestigious piece of engineering. But ever since, it's been a battle to keep this very ship out of the scrapyard, only to become now one of the most famous decaying and abandoned ships in the world. For me personally, I've always been searching for specific editing techniques, and when it comes down to stuff I don't know about editing and even photography, Skillshare is the first place I go. It's an extremely useful site that offers over 19,000 courses on a wide range of topics. Final Cut Pro or any other useful editing software lessons live on the site, and it's something I always go to for professional and helpful tutorials to improve my work. Premium memberships begin at around $10 a month, but for the first 300 people who sign up with the link in the description, you can get your first two months of Skillshare for free. Anyway guys, my name is Jake, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat, and thank you very much for watching.